Hi, I'm Vicky. I'm glad you're here. Today I have six ways to fold thick watercolour paper. It's not as easy as it sounds to fold watercolour paper in half. I like using these A5 sheets and I have quite a few of them. Some are Fabriano, some are Canson and they're different weights of paper. And this particular one, this Fabriano is 200 GSM or 90 pounds. This other Fabriano Studio Watercolour is 300 GSM, which is really heavy. And this is hot pressed paper. The other papers pads that I have are Canson Watercolour Paper Pads. One is 270 GSM and this one here is 185 GSM. So I'm going to choose the two heaviest papers just for the purpose of demonstrating this exercise to you. Now you may think it's rather simple to take a sheet of watercolour paper and fold it in half. I can assure you it's not. I actually had a couple of epic fails in this, but I've left them in just to show you what not to do. But I have six different methods that will actually work for you. So even if you don't have special equipment, if you don't have scoreboards, if you don't have cutting boards, or if like me, you find yourself at a retreat and you don't have all your materials and you need to fold some paper and don't quite know what to do, then have a look at how this goes. So the first type I'm trying to do, the first method is to hand fold it. And this is so thick, this paper, you really have to wrangle it. It's really hard to even bend it, let alone fold it. So I'm very carefully placing it down and making sure the corners are lined up, pressing it with my finger, thinking, well, that's okay. It's all lined up. It's pretty good, but it looks awful. You can see how the paper is really distressed looking. If I fold it back on itself, that's a bit of a neater fold on the front, but not really when you open it on the inside, it's just not good. Now I've squared it off and that's okay. So I'm going to use another method on it, which is method two, which is scissor burnishing. So you take the handle of some scissors and you run it down the side and that's actually improved that 100%. Now, here's an unconventional method. I rec recommend you don't try this at home, guys. <laughs> Fingers crossed, but I have to tell you, this did not work. I decided I would try to flatten out the paper once I'd folded it by putting it through my big shot machine and everything that could go wrong went wrong. It does not line up for a start. It's got dirt all over it from the last project that I had on there. And I've actually managed to emboss something into the top of it, just something that was left over on the plate. So this one, I don't recommend it. I haven't included it as a method. But just to ensure that um, I don't try this again, it just looks awful. Look how bad it looks. I'm actually going to take a pair of scissors and cut it in half and I'm going to set this aside as two card fronts that I can later cut down with my trimmer but that one did not work but I thought I'd leave it in just for fun. Okay so this watercolour paper is rough textured so it's really heavy duty it's 270 gsm this is method three this is the recommended method one that is the easiest if if you have a paper trimmer, this is the method to use. Just don't use your cutting blade. Make sure you use your scoring blade. So I'm measuring that at four and one eighths of an inch, bringing in my scoring blade, not my cutting blade, giving it a really good go back and forth. And you see what a beautiful fold that makes. And when I'm painting, I often will put this on a flat piece of board so I don't always want to have my card folded in half when I start but you can see how nice that is I can come back and fold it later on when I finish painting on it now the next method method four is using a tea ruler now these tea rulers are great if you don't have one they're fabulous for lining everything up on your cards but they're also fabulous for finding the halfway mark and this is at four and one eighths of an inch. I'm just marking with a pencil. 
And I'm just doing one mark in the centre there because you only need the ruler to touch that mark. You don't need to make any other measurements. And I'm bringing in some scoring tools. Now, these are actually part of a paper modelling kit by Crafts For You. It comes with a very dense foam piece and it's meant for modelling paper flowers. But you can also use these styluses. Is that the right word or stylus? To make an impression on your paper. I wouldn't use the sharpest point because I think that would actually poke through the paper. So I'm using one of the medium points, which has a rounder tip on it. And I'm just scoring it down against the T ruler. So if you don't have a scoreboard, a T ruler makes a very inexpensive alternative. They're not that dear. I purchased this on Amazon, I think for about $6. And that makes a great score mark. You can see how neat that looks. So that's a great method, one I recommend. Now I did have a hair's breadth of paper that I need to trim. So I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer, but you could actually shave that off with some long scissors. It's just the tiniest amount. that's much better. All right, so this is the point I used. That's the size of it there. It's sort of a medium rounded tip and that works perfectly on this very heavy duty rough paper. Now method five is to bring in a scoreboard, which is another recommended method because this is one of the best ways you can score paper. Because it's very heavy paper, this is like scoring thick cardstock. And it's up to you whether you want to use the thin or the thick end of the scoring stylus that comes with a scoreboard. Um, I like to use the thinner one because it seems to grab into the holes a bit better with thick hard stock, but it's, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm scoring at the four and one eighth of an inch mark. And I missed a little bit, but I just decided, okay, I'll leave that there. And it doesn't actually show up where I ran off the line a little bit. This is why I actually like the T ruler better because you can hold the stylus right against, excuse me, against the T ruler and you don't have it running off. So a bone folder is an exceptionally good tool to have just for regular cardstock. It makes a really nice crisp crease line and it finishes off, finishes off your card beautifully. Okay, now for method six. Method six is using a steel edge. Now I'm just going to clean my ruler down. I've been using it with some gel medium and I want to make sure there's no sticky marks on it. I'm just using a baby wipe for that. And I'm using the Fabriano paper. So this is 300 GSM, 140 grams. And with the T ruler and the steel edge, you can sort of use them in a similar fashion. See how I can line that edge of the ruler right to the edge of the paper and mark it at four and one eighths of an inch at the top. I'm just using a mechanical pencil for this. Same at the bottom, four and one eighth of an inch. So a small mark top and bottom. Now I'm just going to line up those marks very carefully. Hold it down really tight, make it nice and level. And then I'm going to put my fingers behind it from the back and push the paper into the edge of the steel ruler. So that's forming a nice crease mark. And when I take the ruler away, you can see how nice that looks. The sharp edge of the steel has created that impression. Now I'm just rubbing off those or erasing those marks with the end of the mechanical pencil. Now, when I scored this with the edge of the scissors, I'm wishing that I had checked it a little bit first because it's actually a little bit off center on all four sides. So I thought, okay, well, is this like regular cardstock so I can actually try and reburnish it? But it really isn't. It's really hard to do. Once you have actually burnished heavy watercolor paper, 
remember this is 300 GSM or 140 pounds, it's really hard to wrangle it back into shape. So I really tried to get the edges lined up and it really wasn't having any of it. So I decided to sort of pat it with the end of the scissors. That was a little bit more useful. And eventually I got the top and bottom lined up, but I still had some leftover edge. So I just trimmed that hair's breadth of leftover piece off with some very long scissors. So that's a tip. If you do make an error, you can sometimes trim off with these long scissors. See how it's just a hair's breadth, but it does make all the difference because I finally got the top and bottom of it level. Now I've got the side level as well. So I rescued that one. <laughs> so these are all different methods for folding very heavy duty watercolor paper. I love these for card making. I also use the Canson XL 9x12 pad for making slimline cards, but the paper on that is nowhere near as thick and it's much easier to score. So I didn't use that today. And there's those two pieces that I cut in half and I'll use them for card fronts. So there's no waste. So I hope you found that helpful and I want to wish you all some happy watercolouring on some beautiful heavy duty paper.